Moving on to our third speaker. Our third speaker will be giving his icebreaker presentation today. Again, the objective is to introduce himself to the club, to begin speaking before their audience and discover those skills, strong communication skills that they already have, and maybe to identify some areas that they may want to work on and improve in their next presentation. Our third speaker's title is Dejected to Determine. Dejected to Determine. The time of the speech for our timer is four to six minutes. Six minutes. Please help me welcome speaker number three, Toastmaster Bill Sadler. Think back to a time when something you did turned out bad. Maybe you made a bad grade, got fired from a job, went through a divorce, or maybe someone just made fun of you for something you did. How did you feel? I can tell you how I felt. I felt dejected. <laughs> Have you ever felt dejected? Well, in the next five minutes, you'll learn the one tool that even today takes me from dejected to determined. Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. My name is Bill Sadler. You may not have noticed, but I spell Bill with just one L. See, my real name is William on my birth certificate, but my parents originally nicknamed me Billy. By the second grade, I was so tired of all the Billy jokes, <laughs> Billy boy, Billy Bob, Billy Go. <laughs> I told my parents I had to drop the Y and be called Bill, B-I-L-L, -L, because Bill sounded much more mature in the second grade. <laughs> my name stayed that way until I lost one of those L's in 1985. Hmm. I was a senior in high school at Panama City Beach, Florida. It was spring break, and I wanted a name tag for the front of my truck. Well, it was the last day of spring break, and on the way out of town, I went by the surf hut in Panama City. It was a gift shop. When inside, the tag, the perfect tag, was $8, and it was $1 for each letter. Great. I had exactly $12 left over from my spring break trip. The guy behind the cash register rang it up and he said, that'll be $12.84. $12.84? Hmm. <laughs> I forgot about the sales tax. I only had $12. He and I negotiated a bit and he came up with a solution. He would put on three letters now, <laughs> leave us good space, and I could come back later in the summer and get the fourth letter. <laughs> I agreed, but I never went back. <laughs> so I've been B-I-L ever since. <laughs> Besides all the Billy jokes, I remember feeling dejected in the first grade by my first grade teacher. The class was divided into three reading levels based on how well the students read. And my teacher made a point to tell me, Bill, you can't be in the top reading level. I was dejected. I could have resigned myself to the label that, Bill, you're just going to be an average student. Mm -hmm. But I remember something my mother told me. She said, Bill, if you come home from work and from school and do your homework, as soon as you get home and you practice reading every day, you can be in that top reading level. And I believed my mom. She was right. But you know what she gave me? She gave me hope. Hope is the tool that can take you from dejected to determined. When we were young, I remember all my friends wearing Levi's jeans. But we were so poor, I had to wear Kmart jeans. <laughs> and of course, they made fun of me. <laughs> By the seventh grade, I tried to think of every way possible to earn some money. Dad said, Bill, why don't you cut grass? <coughs> Great idea. I went across the street to our neighbor, asked him if I could cut his grass. He told me that I was too young at 12 years of age, plus he already had two high school boys cutting his yard. Again, I was dejected. <laughs> How in the world would I ever get a pair of Levi's? <laughs> Well, one day, I was playing in my yard while those two boys were cutting the neighbor's yard. 
And I don't know how they did this, but they butchered his lawn like a bad haircut. <laughs> the neighbor came home from work, pulled in the driveway, and I could tell he was mad as a hornet. He got out of that car, looked at his yard, and looked at me. He looked at his yard, and he looked at me. He stormed across that road and said, Did you do this to my yard? Mm. No, sir. But I can fix it. <laughs> I was hired on the spot, and I found my hope. That one yard at age 12 turned into 75 yards by the time I was 18 years of age. And Toastmaster of the Day, you know what? I never wore another pair of Kmart jackets. <laughs> <laughs> In conclusion, a little bit about my family. My wife, Heather, is a hospice nurse. We have a six-year-old and a five-year-old child. I also have an 18-year-old daughter who's a freshman at Florida State University. Go Knowles! I am determined to be the best husband and best dad I could possibly be. I also have the honor of working with my brother, Wes. We're retirement advisors. We help people with retirement investing, things like IRAs and 401ks. I'm determined to be the best business partner with my brother and the best retirement advisor to my clients. If I had to describe myself in a word, it's not dejected, it's determined. Yes. But I would have nothing to be determined about if I didn't have hope. Yes. And by definition, hope is looking forward mm -hmm. with positive expectations. Mm -hmm. And when you're focused on hope, can't be held back by your past. Thank you.